Imagine a craft with no visible means of propulsion, no wings, no cockpit, it casts a shadow, it breaks the laws of physics, it can move from the sea to space in an instant. You can see it with your own eyes. It's visible to pilots. It's visible on radar. It's real. That technology exists today. You can go out and buy one. I really don't know what the Tic Tac was. But just possibly, it was one of these. Hmm. Trying to research the truth behind military technology and UAP is not really possible on the internet because of course, it's highly classified and dark secret technology. But I think I found a way through that curtain. Defense contractors in all countries, DARPA in the US, really don't want you to know what they're up to, but they also need funding. So often a very classified project talks in general terms, and also it's associated with a academic university research. So today I'm going to let you into a secret about me and about research. What I'm going to tell you about today is one of the most powerful tools of research that you can use to get behind the curtain. And it's relatively simple. We all want to know the nitty gritty. You know, who is the company? How does the technology work to project UAP's visualizations into space? We're not going to find that on a Google search. But what you can do is look at the big picture. Let me explain. So what is the big picture? Well, it's about asking the obvious questions. A good example in the so-called Rendlesham incident, why were only US Air Force personnel affected by whatever happened? Where were the British emergency services, fire, police and ambulance? They weren't there. And in this current debate about UAP, I decided to look at who's doing what. And it's revealed a lot from universities to defense contractors. They all don't want to tell you exactly the project they're working on, but they all want to boast about the type of technology that they're working on. And what that reveals is very interesting. There are two big funded areas of research, laser-induced plasma, LIP, and a real push into space technology, including bases on the moon. Today for you, I'm going to reveal some of the unclassified, the stuff that they want to tell you about LIP, laser-induced plasma. Universities, defense contractors all over the world are working on laser-induced plasma. So as a catch-up, what is LIP? Well, it's amazing. It's a way of producing a solid object in space. Let me tell you how it works in an unclassified area, and that's astronomy. This is a guide star. This is LIP. This is laser-induced plasma. What happens is that four lasers focus, a bit like shining sunlight through a magnifying glass, to ignite a piece of paper. In this case, the four lasers come to a point and ignite the air. They're orange sodium lasers. Interestingly, and I'll go into this, they're not particularly high powered. You don't need a nuclear reactor or connection to the massive grid. Laser induced plasma, LIP, doesn't need extreme power, but I'll get back to that in a minute. The four beams focus into a point, they ignite the atmosphere, literally stripping sodium in the air into its ions, it forms a ball, a glowing ball, which is used as the guide star technology, which of course is a spin-off of a military satellite technology, but I think you know that. And if you can produce a glowing ball of plasma, you can produce a glowing dot of plasma anywhere in the sky and you can steer it around and through persistence of vision you can make a volumetric 3d object appear 
And you can go out and buy that today. The US Air Force and probably the RAF and probably the whole of NATO use ghost planes. They're countermeasures against incoming missiles, but they also are countermeasures against radar. So you at the back are all shouting, yeah, but plasma doesn't reflect radar. Well, actually, some of it does very badly. Plasma actually absorbs radar energy in lots of frequencies, but there are some types of exotic plasma People call them uh, dusty plasma, which actually does reflect radar a little bit. And that reveals a massive secret about stealth airplanes. We all are told that stealth aircraft are radar tiny, possibly a B-2 bomber is the size of a seagull when seen on radar. Why isn't it totally invisible? That is very revealing because you want it to appear as the same size as your LIP ghost fleet. So you've projected a dozen other bombers into the sky that are visible by radar. They appear very small, but they're obviously a stealthy aircraft. But one of them is real and you want the real one to have the same radar signature as the LIP laser-induced plasma ghost ships. That's pretty secret. We are living in a decade where war and military funding is enormous. The stuff being worked on is literally out of this world. You won't believe the type of technology that is around today that you don't know about. Remember the scene out of the classic film, The Graduate, where Benjamin is told at the pool party at the beginning of the one film, word one word. Yes. One word. Yes, sir. Are you listening? Yes, I am. Plastics. Plastics. Well, you viewers need to know one word to answer a lot of the mysteries that you would like to know about. And that word is plasma. And by asking the big picture, by looking at universities and defense contractors, what they're saying in public, just watch the number of programs that are out there working with plasma. I personally believe that some UAP are man-made. And what we are seeing on the internet, on the media, the so-called Nimitz encounters, are disinformation. They are a classic distraction from the truth. They are there to confuse our enemy and to bamboozle the public. What's really going on is vast amounts of funding into an advanced technology that will change the modern world. I'm gonna leave you with some unclassified images that I found by asking the big picture from universities, from defense contractors, all working on plasma technology. The truth is out there. <laughs>